I'm Ellen Driscoll. I was born and raised in Boston. Uh, I came to a kind of an awakening about race relations in the United States when I was 12. And my mother took me on my first civil rights demonstration, which was led by Martin Luther King, and we marched through Roxbury. The march was about housing rights, equal housing rights. And I suddenly realized that I guess I wasn't a kid anymore, and I was living in a country that was full of all kinds of inequities. My parents were very active in the fight to desegregate the Boston school system, which led to riots in the streets. And so my household was filled with both anxiety and activism at the same time. As an adult, I moved to New York City, and um, I was living a block away from Tompkins Square Park when I first created the loophole of retreat, which is on exhibit in the Legacies show. And there were about several hundred people, um, homeless people living in Tompkins Square Park at that time. Every park bench was a small improvisational dwelling. And every summer the New York City police would come and roust out the homeless people. They would flee to the river for a little while and then come back almost like the tide. By September, the dwellings were back on every bench. Around this time, I applied for a fellowship to research what it meant to be essentially a fugitive or an exile within your own country. But I wanted to research something historical and not the present day situation in Tompkins Square Park. I spent a year at the Bunting Institute doing this research and creating the loophole of retreat. And the loophole of retreat centers on a single narrative that I focused on. It's called Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl by Harriet Jacobs. And in this narrative, which I encourage everyone to read, there's one chapter entitled The Loophole of Retreat. After Harriet Jacobs has resisted the sexual advances of her master and escaped and gone into hiding in her small town up above her free grandmother's house in the eaves of her grandmother's house, Early into her hiding, she hit her head on a drill bit that had been left in the eaves. And using this drill bit, she made herself a small hole through which she could see not just the life of the town, but her former master. And the loophole of retreat is based on this one chapter in which Harriet Jacobs, although she lost her physical self in hiding for seven years in a space that she couldn't stand up in, she gained an amazing kind of optical power and psychological power over her circumstances.